The senator from Indiana. Mr. President, growing up, my dad used to tell me on a regular basis that you should never speak up unless you can improve upon the silence. Yeah, I've tried to take that to heart in my personal life and my professional life. And today I feel like I can improve upon the silence. I have a deep conviction that the United States Senate is not living up to the expectations of the American people. The American people deserve a United States Senate as good as the American people. They deserve a United States Senate that's responsive when they need government most. I suppose it's fashionable these days to use so many of our institutions in society to elevate ourselves. Well, folks, this institution, this institution, its credibility is at stake. The American people need this institution to function. I was a United States Marine after graduating from, from college. And I never saw a war, Mr. President. I never saw an, a national emergency, a major crisis. And um, I'm very straightforward about that. But I have to say, I was ready for a war. I was prepared for that big day when the United States of America really, really needed me. And I made sure all my Marines were prepared. We were prepared to do our duty when it mattered most. As it relates to this pandemic, I have to say the American people are ready. Look around. It makes you proud. Are we not a unified people? Are we a tribal people? There's a lot of, a lot of conversation about that and among political circles. Spend some time in my neighborhood. Spend some time back home in Indiana right now. Maybe it took some, some separation, some social distancing. Maybe it took some time away from work, some time away from social gatherings. Maybe it, maybe it took cancellation, unfortunately, of, of, of March Madness, NCAA tournament, to remind us all that, that we're deeply connected with one another, and we, we long for those connections, regardless of, of political philosophy, regardless of the fact that we have an election going on. That's what, not what is real important to regular people. Americans are coming together. They're ready for this emergency. And this is indeed an emergency. Make no mistake. Look across the country, all the National Guards that are being mobilized. This is an emergency that the people of my home state have been responding favorably to. The Senate needs to as well. Folks in, in my neighborhood are, are, are putting bags of groceries on, on people's doorstep that are unable to go out and, and get groceries themselves. They're, I know this from my own family. They're, 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 they're calling senior citizens they know that they think are probably lonely at this time. They're coming together. Back in, in Evansville, one of my friends, JP, he's a business owner. He's very active in the community. We were on the phone the other day. I think like other members, I've, I've had countless phone calls in the last week or so business owners, not-for-profit leaders, healthcare care uh, providers, rank-and-file citizens. And this active citizen, this community leader, J.P., in Evansville, says that he was on the phone with the mayor, local business leaders, local health care leaders, and a bunch of others from southern Indiana, and they were all on the same page. They figured out how to come together, how to solve local problems together. They were all ready to tackle this because they sense what we should all sense. The sooner you can tackle these challenges, the sooner the pain will end. The sooner we will reduce anxiety among our neighbors. They're all determined to work together. In fact, he said he had not seen such unity within the community of, of, of Evansville, Indiana, since 9-11. It says a lot. Well, the Senate must be ready. This package, the CARES Act, was negotiated in a bipartisan way. 
to Democrats, to Republicans in consultation for each of the various working groups. They put together a package. It all came together. It was introduced. It was all bipartisan until it came time to vote on a procedural vote yesterday. You know, this, this virus may seem to many small because it's impacted a small percentage of, of our population directly. But I have to say, its impact is, is growing rapidly. The longer it takes us to come together, the more damage that's going to be done. This is an emergency. It is time for my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to take yes for an answer. Let's not play games. So what's this bill do? Nothing controversial. Provides additional assistance for health care needs. This is a pandemic. We need more masks. We need more PPE. Our hospitals are swamped. They can't conduct elective surgeries anymore. Their finances are out of whack. We need to help them out. What else does it do? It helps individual Americans. Folks are resource constrained right now. They can't go to work. So 1200 bucks, at least for starts, per, per American, $2,400 per married couple, an additional $500 if, if you have dependents, that's really going to make a difference in Hoosiers' lives. We need to make sure that people have jobs to go back to once we get through this as well. And that's why this legislation is designed to provide much needed liquidity for these businesses. They still have debts to pay. They still got debts. They want to make payroll. <laughs> I can't tell you. I mean, I've talked to so many small businessmen in tears. I've, I've, I've talked to leaders of, of our largest corporations as well, and I'll tell you, I talked to, to a lady who, who didn't think things looked real good. We didn't have a whole lot of time to respond to this. Meeting payroll, paying for rent, paying your leases, paying your mortgage. These are the essentials, folks. And this is not 2008. That was a horrible crisis. But we are coming off the best economy, arguably, in five decades. And because the economy was so good, people were optimistic about the future. And through no fault of their own, businessmen did sort of the rational thing. They invested in the future, the property, the plant, the equipment that's required to grow. They were working on, on taking market share. All of those who believe in the free enterprise system can associate ourselves with, with what they were trying to accomplish. 2008, a little different. The economy was lethargic. The bottom fell out of the economy. But in, in sort of an ironic twist, when the economy's down, people are paying down their debts. They're bolstering that financial, that, that balance sheet. They're maintaining some liquid assets in anticipation of, of further tough times. We don't have that benefit right now. We can measure the prospects of our employers in days. For many of them, it's too late. The United States Senate needs to treat this like an emergency, because it is an emergency. So what else does this legislation does, do? Well, I, there's a category, let me just group together, let me call it, I think, in, incontrovertibly, emergency funding. $20 billion for veterans' health care, $11 billion for vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, and other preparedness needs, masks, gloves, ventilators, $75 billion for hospitals, $4.5 billion for the Centers for Disease Control, $12 billion for America's military as it helps us respond to this, this pandemic, and so on. That's what the bill's all about. That's what we're fighting about. So what happened? 
How do things go off track? Well, I've got, and it may surprise some folks, but I've got a very positive relationship with the Democratic leader. We just happen to have a lot of principled disagreements. And at the very end of a bipartisan process, when he and other members of, of, of his caucus try and insert provisions pertaining to the Green New Deal and other far-left priorities into this package, then, then, then that, of course, disrupts our emergency response. So now we have Speaker Pelosi seemingly hijacking the process. That's right, she's over in the House of Representatives. She's not even part of this body, and her folks are all home. The House isn't in session. But Speaker Pelosi wanted to remain relevant. She decided she wanted to get some TV time, I suppose. And, 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 and so her, her proposal involves federalizing voting. We can have an honest debate about whether it's appropriate to, to federalize the voting system, to mandate, you know, um, early voting, uh, same-day voter registration. That's, that's something that should be debated in the United States Senate because I know it's a priority of so many of, of my colleagues. Again, elements of the Green, Green New Deal. We can debate whether or not there has to be a full offset of airline emissions by 2025. Some other time, we can debate whether or not greenhouse gas statistics for individual flights should be widely available. Let's, let's work on that separately after we help the American people. Let's not work on pet priorities. We can, we can debate permanent paid leave. Permanent paid leave granted by the federal government some other time. This is a pandemic. It's an economic emergency, a public health emergency. The American people want a response. They, they, they don't want us to focus on this right now. I made a lot of phone calls in recent days back home. None of this is possible without the wherewithal, without the hard work of, of sturdy Americans, without great American innovation. None of the resources that are required to actually sustain our government, to feed our families. People need places to work. Here's what's happening in Indiana, a little snapshot. The RV industry, the global headquarters of the, of the recreational vehicle industries, Elkhart, Indiana. We're seeing RV companies temporarily shutting down in Indiana, and I know we're seeing it across the country. The hotel industry. Today, the two largest hospitals in Indianapolis had to shut their doors. I'm not just talking about buildings shutting their doors. I'm, this closure is going to mean, mean the loss of employment for about 780 full-time workers. Think of all the family members that depend on those workers. This is an emergency. The auto industry. Hoosiers proudly manufacture the components for our auto industry. They assemble those components into finished automobiles. It's, it, that industry has been brought to a halt on account of this unique crisis. And the worst we hear is yet to come. Airlines, they're feeling the most immediate impact. I flew the other day from, from my home in the Indianapolis area, flew out of the airport to Washington, D.C. It wasn't a charter flight. I was the only passenger. I was the only passenger on the aircraft. We know that's not a sustainable business model. When you're paying for the fuel, we got a pilot and a co-pilot and a flight attendant and me. This is an emergency. 